Hey garden friends, this morning we are going to prop up and or support plants that start to flop about this time of year. Now ideally I would have gotten the supports put on sooner than now, but it is what it is. So I go around, I find the plants that are flopping, and a perfect example was these crocosmias and they were starting to fall down into the path and this one still needs to be tied up to this. This is an obelisk, um, little metal obelisk. I got this at Lowe's uh, several years ago and they were they were clearing them out and they were like nine bucks. I just now, I bought that one over there. I don't know if it's in this camera yet right now, but I have a rose uh, tied to it and that one was $40. So it shows you how I got a real steal on these. So anyways, on this, I have a closed pin here. I don't know why it was on there. Love my garden shirt. Got these big pockets. These are the pantyhose strips I cut from old pantyhose. Um, I do wear them in the winter when I wear dresses. So, oops, I just stepped on a nepeta. Be careful not to step on things in your garden. But see, this one is flopping. And so I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to tie the pantyhose strip around. And I may go down further on it rather than right at the flower. Oops, I lost my tension there. Okay, try it again. We're gonna go around it and tie it. I don't wanna tie it too snug. I just wanna get it upright. Now, if you have other things to tie with, sometimes I use wire, um, garden wire and I can make um, like a hoop shape. And so it just kind of contains it within that shape instead of pulling it up against <coughs> the obelisk. This one is kind of wanting to go down. I could just kind of lean it against there like that instead of tying it to it. And behind me is some Verbena bonariensis that's kind of leaning and I can also, this one I can chop back because this one's going to seed. Um, I could do get a bamboo pole, and I may do that. Go cut some bamboo off one of my bamboos. That's why I grow it, one of the reasons, other than I love bamboo. And then stick the pole in here and tie that up to it. So I will go get some bamboo, and we will do that. Before I do that, really quick, I'm going to show you a perfect example. Try not to move too fast. Well, my delphinium there, they were starting to lean and you see the pole behind it and I've got those lashed to that to keep them upright. Plants in my garden tend to try to reach for the sun because we're surrounded, as you can see, the woods across by 200, 300 foot tall trees and um, they block sun and our, the plants start to reach for it. So I'm gonna tilt you down. And there's a perfect example of flowers beginning to flop. Now they were upright for a long time and now they're just now leaning over. So I was going to show you how I do that. This is one of my bamboos that I grow in a pot. I grow all of mine in a pot. I'm trying to find one that's very thick and tall and I think I'm spotting one. And um, I use my loppers, excuse me for stepping in front of the camera. I use my loppers because these things, especially they're real hefty ones. Oop, I got spider. I've got spider mites everywhere. There's spider mites in here. Um, and sometimes I look for an older cane. It's a little bit stiffer. And this one looks like it's a good candidate. It's a good, it'll be nice and tall. It, it stays thick for a long ways. So I will cut this one out. Now this one isn't one of the oldest canes. This one looks older because it's more yellowed. And I, I think this is a, a golden bamboo, but I'm not certain of what it is, only because the canes turn it's this beautiful golden color. Now here's a new cane, very green. This one I just love, would work great, but it's like a new cane and I really don't want to cut it out yet. So I will go ahead with this one, cut it out, and then I will cut it down to size. Now that I have it cut off, I will take my pruners and cut off all these little side branches and sink it. If I'm going to sink it into the ground, maybe that far, this, it will leave that much. I'm not doing this very well. I leave this much above the ground, which would be perfect support 
for that bonariensis. So I will prune off all of these and then cut it down to size and then we'll take it out front to the where the bonariensis is and the verbena bonariensis and we'll use it for the support. So let's get over to that. See if you can see me. It's not hard. Just a little task. Take them off. Now up here at the thinner part where I'm going to cut it off, I can do that with the pruners. I don't have to use the loppers. So, yeah, I could probably do it right here and have it be plenty tall. And there is my support cane from a bamboo. Grew it myself. You can also buy bamboo canes at, at garden centers. So let's go put it in the ground. I know we're kind of getting a lot of backlight here, but um, it will be fine. You can really kind of guesstimate what I'm doing. I'm just putting it down in the ground. Why oh, is a tough spot? By the bonariensis. And I have it the narrow end down. And it's not wanting to go in the soil. What is going on here? I might have just too much root stock going on there. Oh, and we found it. I'm trying to give it into the ground so it's stable enough to support it. I must have so much in the ground over here. Sorry, I've got my back end into the... And this is why you need a pretty sturdy cane so that it will stand, especially as this one has a little green in it, so it makes it a little more pliable. If I waited for it to be sturdier, like more dried out, it wouldn't uh, bend. So, getting one of my ties. Let's see if I pushed it in the ground far enough. I may not have. If I do it down low. And I tie it on here. If you find one isn't enough, like I didn't get it down in the ground very far. So it might start tilting. Uh, then you can do two beside each other. Yeah, this needs to be deadheaded because it's going to seed and that will promote more. And you can see, let me step back here. These Black Eyed Susans are also leaning. But these I would put um, either another cane in here or one of my plant supports. Now I will link to the video of my plant supports and how I make them from remesh panels, and also my blog post that I am going to put up um, quite soon. So, or if I have it already, I might have already by the time I do this. So that's another one. I need to decide what, what, which way I wanna go with this. Oh, there's another one, needs to go there. Okay, so that's one done with a pole. Not done very well, but it's with a bamboo stake. And, um, like I said, if I would have done this sooner, they wouldn't have gotten so out of fl floppiness or anyways. So I'll, I, I know, here's one I could show you really quick. I didn't even pay attention to this till just now. And I'm wondering if you really can see the support. Yeah, you probably can. Right there around my sea holly. You see it's a piece of remesh panel that's been cut down to size. It has the, the little ends that poke down into the soil and it's kind of curved. It comes around to here and here, so it curves around and it supports the sea holly. Now for this sea holly, it could have been a little taller or if I move it a little closer, it will hold up my sea holly a little bit better, making sure I'm not poking holes in my um, thing. I haven't got it down in the soil good, so I need to soften the soil a little bit to so put it in there. but. 
that will support that supports that sea holly which i didn't realize my sea hollies got that tall this is the first year they really flowered and i've had them in the ground i started them from seed last year and um, planted it in the ground this er early spring and wow they've been a pollinator magnet as well as they got much taller than i anticipated i must not have read the package always read your seed packet and kind of visualize where you're putting them and how tall they'll grow but i really have been loving this misty blue color in the garden so um oh i could also show you how i use the inexpensive tomato cages as plant supports so here's another perfect example of black eyed susie's flopping now i will say that black eyed susie's usually fl flop like this when they're getting too much water and I wouldn't say really too much water because you see they're not suffering from um, being waterlogged. It's that it just makes them have weaker stem growth. I have some up by the roadside and I could take you up there in a minute and you will see they are standing perfectly upright just fine on their own, but they do not get any extra water. These in here get watered along with the other plants that do benefit from more water. So uh, black eyed Susie's are very drought tolerant. And if you're gonna water or put them in an area that does get uh, watering in the summer, you will need to support them. So I will go make my tomato, I shouldn't say tomato cage because it's what I make my tomato cages out of. I should call it my remesh support and bring it in here and support these black eyed Susans. And as you can see, I have a obelisk. This is one of my DIY obelisks that I built and, um, and or my husband built, we both have built some. And I pop them through the garden where I know plants will need support. And this is another case of where I will use the garden wire. And I probably should, instead of just yapping to you about it, show you how I use the garden wire and help support plants when there's something to tie it against in the garden. I had to find some bare ground that wasn't covered in plants too much so that I could show you what I'm doing. This also, it's a tomato cage. It's one of the cheap ones. This is one of the taller ones I got at Tractor Supply. It's also the same ones I use to make my peony plant supports inexpensively. Now, um, if I didn't say it before, this one cost me $4. And I place it on the ground upside down instead of the prongs in the ground. And what I do to um, secure it, I have these little metal staple things that they come, um, They I got it in the irrigation uh, department for the a little quarter inch drip irrigation things. And then I secure it to the ground that way. And let me back you up so you can see what I'm doing. Then on top, so, because it it's kind of has this ugly top, right? Let me see. I can't see in this thing. The little prongs. So, for those, what I do is I gather them up. And then I get a little inexpensive terracotta pot. And I pop it on there. Now, sometimes the tension will actually pop it off. And you may have to really bend them inwards, but that keeps the top from hanging on stuff or what have you. And then you see if there's plants out here or on this side, see this piece of wire? I just hook it, like if it was on this side, I would hook it here. I would wrap it around. I just make a hook. I'm not too terribly technical about it. And then here's the plant standing up and then I would hook it here and this would support it. Now, I only put one staple in. I would put three in a triangular shape and that would hold this secure. Plus this is sitting on top of a hose. But then I could support plants over here. There could be one in the middle and, or, and over there with this little hoop made of wire. So that's another way I support plants that tend to flop. 